Yo, what's going on guys? Yamalta here. This week's countdown is my top 10 fantasy anime number 3. Fantasy has always been one of my favorite anime genres. There's just such a huge variety of series from comedy, romance, and even some action. A lot of the times you follow parallel road travel, and as we all know, it's a lot of fun to watch. So with all that, let's not waste any more time and start this countdown. Starting off at number 10 is Astratus Toy. While job hunting, Naoya is taken by a mysterious girl to a magical land where he is installed in the harem of the succubus princess, Lotte. Due to trauma from her childhood, Lotte hates men and surrounds herself with lots of other women, who all have quirks of their own. In spite of her selfishness, when Naoya learns that Lotte is really quite lonely, he agrees to stay in her world, only if he can bring his daughter with him. At number 9 is Chaos Dragon. In the year 3015, two countries are engulfed in a war of supremacy that is tearing the world around them apart. The small island Nulakamuya has suffered exceptionally from the war, with lands conquered in the name of each kingdom and stolen away from the people. To make matters worse, their deity, the Red Dragon, has gone mad, rampaging about Nulakamuya, burning villages and killing people. Ibuki, a young man who is heir to the throne of this small island, is drawn deep into this conflict. Can he rise to the occasion and save his country? At number 8 is Yurikuma Arashi. This is quite a weird anime. Pretty much in the past, humanoid bears coexisted with humans. However, a meteor shower that fell onto Earth had a strange effect on the bears throughout the world. They suddenly became violent and hungry for human flesh, spurring an endless cycle of bloodshed in which bear ate man and man shot bear, forgetting the lively relationship they once had. The Wall of Severance was thus built, separating the two civilizations and keeping peace. The surprising part is, this is a UD anime. At number 7 is Comet Lucifer. Gift, a world covered in glittering blue crystals called Giftium. Sogo Amagi is a boy who lives in the town of Garden Indigo, which has prospered from the mining of these crystals. Sogo's hobby is collecting rare crystals, and one day becomes involved in a dispute between some of his classmates, causing him to wander into the ruins of a mine where he discovers an underground lake. There, Sogo meets a mysterious girl with blue hair and red eyes. Who is this girl? And what will the meeting bring? The door to an adventure opens with their newly formed friendship. At number 6 is Queen's Blade. In 4 years time, the competition that will decide who the next queen shall be will start. The strongest warrior will continue to rule the country according to tradition and expand it. The contestants need to be 12 years of age or older. They don't need to be human, intelligent or even a resident of the country. The rules for the tournament are simple. Murder is allowed. Any weapon can be chosen. The winner? and new queen is decided when only one warrior remains standing. At number 5 is humanity has declined. Because of the constantly declining birth rates over many decades, human civilization is all but extinct, with only a few humans remaining. They survive in this post-apocalyptic world with what was left behind by the previous generations. Earth is now dominated by fairies, tiny creatures with extremely advanced technology, an obsession with candy, and a complete disregard for human safety. Watashi learns this as she returns to her hometown and assumes her grandfather's position as an arbitrator between the races. Unfortunately, the job isn't going to be anywhere as simple as she expected, and it's going to take a wisdom far beyond her years to achieve her most important mission. At number 4 is Shuffle. In present times, gods and demons coexist together with humans after the door between each of these worlds had opened. Ren is a normal high school student spending his days living peacefully with his childhood friend Kaede. Unexpectedly, one day the king of gods, the king of demons, and their families move in to be Ren's next door neighbors. Apparently, the daughter of the gods, Shia, and the daughter of the demons, Nerine, are both deeply in love with Ren after having met him in the past along with his playful upperclassman Asa and his encounter with the silent but cute Primula, Rin's normal peaceful life has changed so much by dealing with the affections of each of these girls. At number 3 is Trinity 7. Every day is a normal day in the small town where Kasuga Arata lives. However, everything changed on the day of the Black Sun, and following it, a magician appears before him. The Black Sun caused the breakdown phenomenon, which destroyed the town where he lives. Because of this, his normal life was artificially reconstructed by a grimoire that his childhood friend had left. Just what is the purpose of the magician coming to town? 
what will he do with the Grimmer's keepsake? At number 2 is Interviews with Monster Girls. This anime takes place in an age where demi-humans, or more casually known as demi, have slowly started to become accepted in human society. Tetsu Takahashi is a biology teacher who ends up teaching three demi students, hoping to understand more about them while also managing to catch their attention. Overall, this is an absolutely fantastic anime. And if you have not yet seen this series, I highly recommend starting it. Taking the place at number one is Sword Art Online. This anime follows virtual reality gaming, where new technology known as Nerve Gear was created. 10,000 people purchased the Nerve Gear and also the most recently released VR game called Sword Art Online. Kirito is among the lucky players who have entered this new gaming world. However, soon all of the excitement quickly fades when players begin to realize that there is no way to log out of the game. Furthermore, learning that the only way they can log off is by beating all of the bosses that are in the game. Not to mention, if a player dies while well in game, they also die in real life. Overall, SAO is a really awesome anime. The third season has been confirmed, and I cannot wait to see what they have planned for us. Just as a way to live Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this countdown, feel free to check out some of my other countdowns. And until next time, take care.